All right, guys, in this video, I wanted to show you an example of how to calculate the single sample T test. Okay, so um, we're going to do this with some of the examples, uh, practice problems that I already have in the book itself, uh, excuse me, on uh, online. So I just grabbed a couple of these that we can go through. The, the packet's got a lot more of them. Uh, make sure you've got the same problems if you want to work along with me, or at least that you have your T table, your calculator, or something to write with, right? Um, so you can do all of this. Okay, so let's start with the first problem. What does it say? It says, for each of the following hypothetical experiments, you should identify A, the hypothesis, and whether it is directional or non-directional, whether the design warrants a Z-test or a particular type of T-test, and then determine the critical value for each of three different possible P or alpha levels, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10. Okay, so a professor wants to know if her introductory psychology, or excuse me, statistics class has a good gra grasp of basic math. Okay, six students are chosen at random from the class and given a math proficiency test. The professor wants the class to be able to score above 70 on the test. So what do you think is the professor's hypothesis here? Probably that her stats class will perform above, well, I can't spell here today, above the average 70 on the proficiency test. Okay, a little bit of abbreviation there because I don't need to write all those words out. You get the idea. Um, specific prediction about, in this case, a direction, right? Above 70, which means with the way all of our um, hypothesis tests are set up, it's always a sample mean versus the population mean or sample one versus sample two, which means we're saying that the sample of six students will be higher than 70, which means that X will be higher than that mean, right, that, that population mean, right, that X bar will be higher than that population mean, which would, if the prediction is right, give us a positive outcome, right? So it's a directional test, right? So that next section that asks that, and we know then that because the direction is predicting in a positive direction, when we get down to calculating our p-values, we need to do positive p-values. Okay, so what type of test are we performing? Well, we know that there are six students that are drawn from the class. We can get their average based on their data. Um, so we would know a sample mean. We would know a population mean, or at least a target goal, right? So we know that. Um, but we do not know population standard deviation, so we would have to get it from this X data, right? And getting it from there. Which means we are in the world of a single sample t-test. Makes sense, since this is a single sample t-test video. Um, the next part is to find the critical value for each of the following p-values. Now, what was our n? We had a six students in this class, so n was six, which means degrees of freedom is equal to five. Because this is a one-tailed test in the positive direction, we're asking what is the percentage associated, or the, the cutoff associated, right? with each of these different percentages. When it's 1% of the distribution in the tail, when it's 5% in the tail, and when it's 10% of the tail. So, for when it's 1% in the tail, we find the section that says 1%, 0.01, says one tail next to it, and because our degrees of freedom are five, I like to do this with a ruler, make sure you're getting the right value, right? One tail, 1%, the value is 3.365. So, plus 3.365. The next one would be for 5% in one tail. Again, at degrees of freedom five, we see it's 2.015. And then finally, when 10% is in one tail, down here in this column here, 10% one tail, degrees of freedom five, 1.476. All right, so that's fairly straightforward. Um, now we need to move on to the next um, question, right? So the next one says, um, a Little League baseball coach wants to know if the 19 kids on his team are representative of other teams in scoring runs. We know that the national average, right, is 5.7. We know 19 kids, right? So we know that information. He's asking whether or not the kids on his team are representative of, whether they're different or the same, right? So let's say then that his hypothesis is that the um, the kids on his team score 
differently on average from the national mean of 5.7 runs. Okay, differently means non-directional, right? It could be in either direction, which means we're gonna have a two-tailed test, right? So our p-values that we look up later are gonna be in both tails. Um, again, we have just a single sample. We know a population mean. We can presumably get standard deviation and sample mean from the sample data, um, but we don't know population standard deviation. So single sample, t-test. Um, lastly, then we got to go back to our T table to get our critical values. So our degrees of freedom in this case, because our sample size was 19, our degrees of freedom is 18. So we have to go into our table again, and the first one says P equals 0.01, but this is going to be 0.01 in two tails because it's non-directional. So degrees of freedom of 18, 0.01 in two tails here, go all the way down to the degrees of freedom of 18, and it's 2.878. It's a plus minus value this time because of a non-directional hypothesis. We do this again at the 0.05 and we find it to be 2.101. And then again for 10% divided into each, that's the same as the 5% in one tail. It's a positive minus 1.734. All right, so we are rolling right along here. What's the next problem? In this case, we are going to be asked to solve the entire thing thing from start to finish for an example. So let's read the example first to figure out what we're in for. A student notices that most of her family is relatively tall but that her grandparents are really short. Knowing what she knows about genetics, she wonders whether her grandparents were once tall but are now shorter just because they are older. That is, she wants to know if people over the age of 65 are shorter than the average of adults between 18 and 64. So. That's her prediction. We can say that right there. She wants to know if people over the age of 65 are shorter. To answer her question, she first visits the website for the CDC and learns that the average height of an adult human is 66.5. Average height of an adult human, 66.5. She then visits a local biker bar where she knows older adults like to hang out and measures the height of 16 bikers over the age of 65. So she's got a sample now. It says, please determine if these older bikers are shorter than the national average using a 5% significance level. So what do we know? Well, we know the prediction is directional. We'll get to that in a second. What values do we know? We know the CDC says adults are 66.5 inches. We know her sample size consists of 16 older adults at the biker bar. So her the degrees of freedom then would be 15 for this sample and we know that we're going to be testing our hypothesis at a 0.05 level um, because it's a directional hypothesis we know that five percent then will be in just one tail which one though well again let's look to see the prediction the prediction says shorter than the national average which means it's predicting the sample size will be a lower number than the population value which means the mean of x minus the population mean will result in a negative value, right? Presumably because that population mean will be taller or higher than the sample mean. This means that 5% will be all the way over in this side of the distribution, right? It'll be a negative value whenever we go to look that up. Okay, so let's fill out some of this part here, um, and then we'll work our way through with the rest, because we know we're gonna have to do x, minus the mean of x and we know we're gonna have to do x minus the mean of x squared because our t-test formula um, is going to require us to do exactly that so a single sample t remember is t x mean minus the population mean right that the distribution of means divided by standard error so we have to figure out standard error we know standard error is equal to standard deviation over the square root of n. And we know that standard deviation is equal to the square root of x minus x bar squared, what we call sum of squares, over n minus one degrees of freedom. Okay, so to get to that, we need to get to that, and to get to that, we need to get to that, and to get to that, we need to get to that. Right, so let's start by getting that. And once we have x bar, the average, then we can get standard deviation, then we can get standard error, and then we can get our t-test done. All right. So, back over here. Time to fill out the table. So if you add all of these up, 
it should add to 1002. I did that twice just to make sure, so I double checked that. Um, divide then by the sample size of 16, and you'll find x bar is equal to 62.625, but rounded to 63. So now I need to subtract that from each of these individual x values. So. All right, that was a breeze. Now let's square them all. All right, squared them all. Um, hopefully you can see all that. Add them all together now, right? We need that sum of squares. I'm gonna do this twice because when I did it by hand the first time, I made an error and my first two calculations didn't match up, so I had to do it a third time to figure out which, of the, was, which was correct. Uh, so add them all up and you should get a 347.8. Again, I've now double checked this one and triple checked it, so I know that that's the right answer unless I made the same error three times. Um, all right, so 347.8, that is our sum of squares. Now, we can go ahead and calculate standard deviation as long as we're at this point, because we know that standard deviation is equal to the sum of squares on top and the degrees of freedom on the bottom, right? So square root of 347.8 over our degrees of freedom of 15. And once you sort of work this out, it should simplify down to about 23.19 in the middle, which then square root of that is 4.82. So then we can get standard error again, as long as we're here by taking 4.82 divided by the square root of sample size. That's easy because that's 16. So you can do an easy square root down to four. So 4.82 divided by four then should give you a 1.21 for our standard error. All right, so now we know a lot of information. Let's go ahead and answer some of these simple questions and finish our problem. So the design of this study, we have just the one sample, right? So it's a single sample. It's not between or within groups because the independent variable is not really being manipulated between samples. Okay, um, the research or alternative hypothesis here, it said that um, she predicted that these individuals were shorter. So um, older adults are shorter on average than younger adults. All right, super simple. Shorter, that's a directional test. Remember we said that that p-value, that, or that cutoff value associated with that p would then be the 5% all the way in some negative side, right, over here on the left side. Um, because we don't know population standard deviation, um, we can't do a z-test, so we are doing a single sample t-test. That's also why we created standard error from sample variability in that last step. Um, so what's our critical value then for the p-value? Well, our degrees of freedom were 15, and we're told to do a um, 0.05 in one tail. So 0.05 in one tail is this here, because it says 0.05, one tail. We go all the way over here to the degrees of freedom of 15, take it down and it's a 1.753 which means a negative 1.753 all right following along here nicely we're almost done last step calculate the test statistics so I'm gonna bring this back so we have those numbers in front of us um, and let's go ahead and do it so T is equal to sample mean minus the population mean divided by standard error we know all of this now 62.63 minus 66.5 divided by 1.21 this will give us once we finish all that out a negative 3.20 for our t value okay so take a look at your distribution again we said this whole area here is our cutoff, and it was cut off by negative, let's see, what did we say it was? The negative 1.753, which means 3.20 is definitely in this shaded region. Which means we can reject the null hypothesis, and we can say that indeed, older adults are shorter 
on average than younger adults, comma, T, degrees of freedom of 15, equal to 3.20 P less than 0.05. All right, see, that's the single sample T-test. Easy peasy.